Welcome again to our Hemp Podcast, sponsored by Transition Town Media in um, in conjunction with the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture grant. We're um, having our second episode of our pod, of our Hemp Podcast here, and today we are um, we're coming to you live from our Hemp Study Group um, headquarters here in Drexel Hill, Pennsylvania, and I have with me today. Uh, my beautiful wife uh, and co-founder of the Hemp Study Group, um, Deanna. So, hello, Deanna. Hello, everyone. You hello, are, honey. You are looking lovely, as always. Oh, thank you. So, um, you know, we're, we came here together today because, you know, as part of the Hemp Study Group, you know, we decided, and I think I said in a previous episode, that we wanted to really just, you know, change our spending habits and, and look at different things that we could purchase um, that were made from hemp or derived from hemp or, you know, had something to do with hemp. So, you know, it's, I think for about six months or so, almost every day we <laughs> went and, um, you know, looked on the internet and there was Amazon boxes coming and boxes coming from all over the world, you know, of these different things that were made from hemp. And, you know, one of my, one of my dreams was to, um, do some sort of like fashion show or something with our, with our, um, our hemp clothes and things like that. Um, so today I am coming to you again, he head to toe in hemp. My shoes are from Hey Dude. They have an element of hemp. My socks, uh, I don't know the brand name, but they are made of hemp. My shorts, my shirt, my sunglasses, my jewelry, except for the rubber band, and my hat are all 100, well, not 100% hemp. They are, um, you know, some portion of them made from hemp. And the more we get into the topic of uh, hemp as a textile, we'll talk more about why a blend versus full hemp. Right. So um, I also am wearing hemp. I have hemp shoes on. I have hemp jeans that actually are from Abercrombie. Um, Abercrombie or Aeropostale? Or Aeropostale. Aeropostale. My, my bad. My, my bad. Aeropostale. So, yeah, we were very um, fortunate that they had them in the store, and I had no idea that um, that they even carried them until we looked them up, and there they were. So mm -hmm. we are wearing jeans now that have hemp in Nice, nice. So um, back in October, we had something called the Courageous Conversation, and, and it was a uh, panel discussion of people in the hemp industry um, from hemp um, building materials and, and hemp um, consumer products, as well as I think hemp we had farm. Hemp farm. We also had the senator, uh, Senator Tim Kearney there to listen. And you know, we were able to put together approximately of like 100 so items um, that are, you know, at least por partially made from hemp. So um, it's amazing when we start looking where you can find these things. You, it's not only online. It was in stores like uh, Michael's, uh, TJ Maxx, Home Goods, uh, Acme, ShopRite. Um, so you would be surprised at the things that you actually use that are, have hemp in them or where you can actually locate these particular products that you could use just about every day. So, um, yeah, these are, these are everyday mainstream, you know, kind of products. So, um, you know, the, the conversation at the hemp conversation was, um, you know, I, I showered today with hemp soap and used hemp shampoo. I then lathered up with my hemp lotion, or actually dried off with my hemp towel, um, you know, lathered up with hemp lotion and put some hair balm in my hair. And, you know, literally in the course of, you know, just getting ready, I put together like almost two dozen items that, you know, I, I was um, using that, you know, had some portion of hemp. And, you know, the way I look at it is the more things that I can buy and, you know, promote or, you know, support the industry, you know, the more hemp that's going to go in the ground. And, you know, the more hemp that goes in the ground, in my opinion, it's probably better for the earth. It's better for the environment um, from a number of different uh, standpoints. And, you know, as we get into these podcasts more and more, we're going to have things that, you know, we talk about, you know, different topics. And carbon sequestration is one that's going to keep coming up. And, um, you know, there are other partners out there that are talking about textiles and, and how textiles have been, you know, kind of overrunning our our dumps and things like that and you know hemp you know really solves an issue there number one it's not fast fashion it's something that's gonna you know last for time Forever. and time and time um but also once once you are rid of it and it has to go back in the ground it's it's biodegradable so it's gonna 
give right back to the earth. Um, you know, so that's something that we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about, but, um, you know, Deanna and I, um, I'm going to step up and do a little bit of, you know, Vanna Whiting of some of the products. And Deanna is going to read you some, you know, fast facts that we found online. Again, we are not doctors. We are not scientists. We are not um, anything really professional having to do with hemp. We're just a couple of people who are really passionate about the plant and all the things that it can do um, for us as people and, uh, and for the environment. So um, we're consumers. We're consumers. And we just kind of want to help educate you guys so that you guys can be consumers, too. So, hi everybody. So, uh, our first category today is going to be hemp as a food. So, uh, we're going to have a little bit of assistance from um, my wife. Uh, she's going to tell us a little, you know, a couple of fun facts about hemp as a food. So, hemp foods, um, foods made from hemp are safe to eat for all ages. By law, they cannot contain more than tiny amounts, which is 0.3% of intoxicating compound THC found in cannabis strains used for medicinal purposes. Hemp is rich in omega-3 and 6 fatty acids. Hemp seeds are an excellent source of protein, and hemp promotes healthy digestion. And growing hemp-based foods promotes soil regeneration. So as you can see here, we have several different um, foods that we actually use, um, and Dave's going to tell you a little about some of the things on the table here. So uh, when we started the hemp study group, there was a group of students from the University of Sciences that were looking for a volunteer project. So they, um, we, we uh, teamed up with them and we created these hemp recipe cards that are hemp inspired uh, recipes that use hemp as some sort of ingredient. But you know, the other cool thing about it is they're printed on hemp paper. Um, you know, so we were very proud of that. But, you know, one of the things that we learned is that, you know, there was an excellent source of protein. Uh, we talked a little bit in the first episode about our pizzas. We made um, some hemp pizzas, and it was kind of like our, our first recipe. We took some um, Greek yogurt, some self-rising flour, and some hemp protein powder. We mixed it together, kneaded it out, threw it in the oven, and boom, presto. We had a, a, a wonderful little flatbread pizza stuff that was high in protein. So to give you an idea, this is the protein powder right here, and there's 12 grams of protein per serving, and a serving is a quarter cup or approximately three teaspoons. And um, that can actually be found at your local supermarket. So, you know, you can get this at Acme and ShopRite and Giant and places like that. So who knew that you could find this stuff in supermarkets? So one of the um, questions at the, at the Courageous Conversations back in October was, you know, people wanted to know where to find these things and they wanted to see mainstream. So here you go. This is one of those things that you can substitute this protein powder for any amount of flour. So say something calls for a, a, a cup of flour. So what we were doing is we were taking half of it um, and putting the regular flour and the other half we were using uh, protein powder. So we were jacking up, you know, uh, the protein per serving or per meal at like 20, 30 grams of protein which was supplementing, you know, our diets, which were at the time vegan. Um, so it's a wonderful way to do that. Um, we have made um, chocolate chip cookies. Um, these hemp chocolate chip cookies have been all over media for over the past year. We've probably done them a, do a dozen times. They are absolutely fantastic. They're kind of like a health cookie. So the more you eat, the healthier you are. So <laughs> got to love those kinds of cookies. You know, that's pretty interesting stuff. Um, Another thing that we eat often is um, hemp pasta. I don't really know how to say this word, but it's sovaglini, <laughs> and it is American-made. It's made um, somewhere in uh, Hudson Valley in New York. Um, but, yes, this is hemp rigatoni pasta. So, again, you know, for those vegan diets that are looking for extra protein and stuff like that, hemp pasta is out there available on Amazon. It's about 5 bucks a box, so it's kind of expensive, but it's healthier for you, So and it saves the world. Um, you know, uh, one of the interesting things people keep asking about is hemp eggs. How can I egg be hemp? So basically what happens here is, um, the, um, the poultry is, is, uh, or the chickens are fed hemp, uh, at least 20% of their diet consists of some sort of hemp protein. So when we're talking about hemp protein, we're not talking about, you know, the stalk, we're talking about the seed basically. So the seed is basically ground up and that's where you get your, um, your feed from. So these eggs are, um, they, they are produced from chickens who have eaten 
20% of their diet being hemp. And this is uh, Kreider Farms, Chickies Creek in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. We talk about, um, you know, local economies and things like that, local food supply chains and stuff like that. This is, um, you know, a company that's out there creating a local food supply chain for the Pennsylvania area out in Lancaster County. Um, also located, you can purchase them at Acme and at Giant. Acme and Giant, correct. Um, during the journey, we met a gentleman by the name of Sean House from Hemp Souls, um, which is a, um, uh, it's hemp a hemp pretzels. Hemp pretzels. So basically, you know, old time Dutch, you know, Lancaster Brown pet pretzels. He basically, you know, makes them with hemp seed instead of uh, regular flour. So um, this is his hemp seed mustard. Um, we do have his, his pretzels and things like that. But, um, you know, it's just, again, another way for us to get some protein into, you know, our diets. He also um, had a hemp peanut butter as well. So, you know, there's all kinds of different ways you can inject hemp into your diet. One way I use, um, instead of olive oil, you know, I've been using this cold-pressed hemp seed oil. Um, kind of, again, very high in omega-3 and 6 um, fatty acids and at the right ratio. So if you're looking for a healthy uh, superfood, hemp is said to be that, you know, a superfood of some sort. Um, one of the things we put into our chocolate chip cookies instead of chocolate chips was this item. It was called dark chocolate hemp seeds. So basically it's chocolate covered hemp seeds and it gave you this nice little crunch and the chocolate flavor. So you know, interesting ways to, to go about injecting hemp into your diet, and this is just another one of them. Um, this product right here is a basically a, a meat patty, a meat substitute patty that's made from hemp and other greens. So a uh, gentleman in Transition Town saw this one day in the supermarket and said that he wanted to try it. He said it was delicious. I will take his word for it. This is not necessarily my cup of tea, but for those that do want you know a, a meat alternative kind of pro, uh, meat product hemp can be there for you um, and I am a big fan of coffee so this is CBD coffee so it's not you know it, it's it has a little bit of medicinal value to it as well um, but I thought you know the really cool thing about this is there I found a, an organization that makes hemp coffee filters so we think about all those pieces of paper we throw about we throw out every single day it can be replaced with one piece of hemp that can be that can last you probably decades. So um, that's pretty much all I have to talk about as far as hemp as a food. Um, I would really would challenge you to you know take a look at some of your recipes and and see if you can't come up with um, the next great recipe for that for hemp in our in our diets. So off to the next thing. All right, everybody, here we are with health and beauty, hemp for health and beauty. So. Um, health and beauty seems to be a product category that hemp is is all over. When you step into different stores like TJ Maxx and Ross and things like that, I see seem to see a lot of this uh, this hemp, hemp health and beauty items. So I'd like to hear from Deanna what health, hemp health and beauty items are all about. Sure, hemp seed oil is rich in vitamins, making it an excellent not just for your skin but also for your hair. And as you can see, we have several uh, hair products listed there. Um, shampoo, conditioner, uh, some hemp oil. Um, then we have moisturizers, uh, moisturizing without clogging your pores. Um, it balances out oily skin. There's anti-aging properties. And hemp is rich in antioxidants, vitamins, and all 21 known amino acids. All right, so again, you know, uh, the, the hemp oil is very good for our skin as far as, you know, balancing the oily uh, pH balancer or something like that that we need in our skins. But um, I'm a person, I take probably more showers than most. I'm three or four times a day. So, you know, when I use this hemp soap, it's actually adding back into the moisture, the moisture of my skin because when you shower so much, you know, it kind of takes away the oils and things like that from your skin. So, you know, the hemp bar soap that's been you know, blend it with a shea butter or something like that, you know, seems to really, really be helpful as far as, you know, moisturizing my skin and things like that. And this one also has an exfoliating element to it. So there's little granules and stuff in it. So it's kind of like a whole experience in the shower, you know, take off the dead skin, put in some new stuff, pretty awesome stuff. Um, one know, of the other things there is that hemp 
coffee body scrub. Yeah, so um, I, <laughs> two two things two of that my Dave loves things. again. I love the shower, and showering, <laughs> and then showering. So again, um, you know, it's kind of like a scrub, so it's exfoliating in nature as in in, in nature as well. So you know, you get um, as you're exfoliating, some of the you know essential oils and things like that from the hemp are you know feeding your skin as well as, as well as taking away some of the uh, the dead skin. Um, I use hemp shampoo almost every single day, um, both hemp shampoo and hemp, hemp conditioner. I have this funny little braid back here that, you know, is my pride and joy, so I try and take care of it with some hemp supplies. My wife got me this for Christmas. It's a um, Wonder Grow Indian Hemp Hair and Scalp Therapy. Love it. It just kind of gives my braid a little shine and stuff like that, and it smells holistic and stuff. That's the other thing. You know, a lot of this stuff... Kind of has a nice little, you know, smell and, you know, aromatherapy to it, which, you know, it, it smells natural. It smells clean, you know, and I, I've just been, you know, enjoying doing, you know, having that scent on my body as well. Um, you know, something that was interesting is that this is uh, eyeshadow and makeup. So, you know, there's cosmetics out there that um, I had, visit, I had visited a, a, a hemp processing facility and it, the hemp goes through this decorticator machine, which breaks it into fibers and some hemp herd. But then there was also this dust, this hemp dust. So they use this hemp dust and squeeze it out and everything and becomes the oil base for a lot of the cosmetic pro um, products and stuff that are out there. So it's kind of cool. Um, it's really, a you know, another way to use the entire plant. You know, I'm real big advocate on, you know, the whole plant. So, you know, using that dust in a way to create you know, these, these cosmetic problems is cosmetic products is, um, you know, again, another way to help heal the earth. Um, not really sure how CBD and sunscreen go together, but they do um, because, you know, again, the oil that's used to create the sunscreen can be derived from hemp. So it lessens our dependence on major, on major oil and things like that. So, you know, we at TTM, we, we, you know, we, we, we do want to be a little bit more sustainable and self-sustaining so, you know, lessening our dependence on big oil and other oil products, you know, uh, by utilizing the hemp plant, you know, really can um, make a dramatic impact, impact in climate change. Um, another item that a lot of people may be familiar with already is this Dr. Bronner's soap. A lot of times you'll see it in a bar or um, in a liquid form, but Dr. Bronner's has um, been doing hemp soap for quite some, for quite some time and also is a uh, fair trade as well. So I thought that was kind of neat. Um, that's pretty much all I've got, you know, as far as the uh, hemp is for health and beauty. But I do have to say that this has probably been the product category that you can find the most um, items, especially out and about in the stores. Again, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Home Goods, Ross, those types of places always seem to have this stuff. Um, and then there's, you know, online, there seems to be lots of different vendors popping up here and there, you know, that are utilizing um, hemp oil um, in a way to uh, treat some of our common beauty um, care products. That's all I got on that. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Uh, right now, we're going to talk about uh, hemp t as a textile. So we've kind of put some things together here on the table. Let's hear a little bit of facts about hemp as a textile from our lovely wife, Deanna. So we're going to talk about hemp fabric and textiles. So hemp was one of the first cultivated fiber plants with archaeological records of its use tracing back to the ancient civilizations in northern China as early as 10,000 BC based on evidence found of rope imprints found on pottery. Um, hemp fabric and textiles, it's more durable than cotton. It actually uses less water than cotton. It's soft to the feel, and it's breathable. And one really important thing is it's antimicrobial. So as you can see, we have an a array of uh, textiles and fabrics here on the table. And Dave's going to go through some of the stuff that, again, um, you can find very easily online in stores. Um, wear it, sleep on it, and Dave's going to take it away. All right, so here we, here we have it. We have um, about a year's worth of buying and making different hemp uh, fabrics and textiles. So the first thing I want to start off with is I just want to show you what hemp looks like. So this is raw hemp that we got sourced from a uh, place called Biofill. 
um, natural fibers right out of King of Prussia. But basically, that is what raw hemp looks like. Um, hemp was used to make this particular fabric. We had a friend of uh, Transition Town take the fabric and make it into a square toss pillow with a zipper so that we could show people what hemp felt like. This is a hemp and, and cotton polyester blend, which most of the hemp out there is a hemp and cotton cotton polyester i'm sorry hemp and cotton blend that's what you kind of want to look for it performs better as part of the blend than it does you know solely by itself you're not going to see many things that are 100 percent hemp um, it, it is usually um, combined with cotton in some sort of way but you know one of the beauties of hemp is that you know it's really soft uh, these are some fabric samples that you know were sent to us from an organization i can't remember the name but they're extremely, really soft. And what I'm being told is the more you wear them, the more you wash them, the softer they become. Um, we took some of these fabric samples and, you know, one of the projects that we decided to do was make little hair scrunchies. So um, this is a, a hemp made hair scrunchie, you know, made and crafted by Transition Town Media. And again, this, uh, this show is really just to promote different hemp products and show people what is out there. Um, you know, as far as clothing goes, you know, there is a wide rate array of clothing out there. Young Maven is one organization that we've worked with. And, you know, they they um, they had, you know, lots of different T-shirts and things like that. My shorts are from Young Maven. And another uh, organization or another company is called Patagonia. If you don't know about Patagonia, you probably should look them up. They're really good, you know, um, environmentally friendly kind of things. But they have a whole hemp collection. They've been on the hemp uh, crusade for quite some time but these um overalls. these overalls are made um from 55 percent hemp there we have a hemp hat here a little farmer's hat this this the shawl and socks so socks is one of those things that you know it's a staple item in our in our um in our wardrobe we all have them and things like that so i i, I really try to you know find different socks i have a pair on these are two other pairs these are made from, I think, 38% hemp. And one of the cool things about this is, you know, hemp seems to be a little bit expensive. These I found online, and I was able to get, like, nine pairs for $12 or something. So they were kind of like giveaways and, and pass outs to people along the way as well. So Those women's hemp socks are like butter on your feet. Like butter. Like <laughs> butter. Um, and that's that's just it. It's, it's really, really soft. It's really, really soft. It's really, really durable. And again, the more you wash it, the softer it becomes. Um, the fact that it's antimicrobial is an awesome thing for socks. You know, we, we think about, you know, the funk that goes on around the foot area. <laughs> you know, having an antimicrobial, you know, um, fabric to to deal with that, you know, is a, it just makes sense, right? Um, you know, speaking of socks, not everybody has hemp underwear, but I do. So um, there are companies out there that make hemp underwear. And again... You know, it sounds kind of crazy, but if we talk about that antimicrobial aspect of it, you know, it truly just makes sense, um, you know, to have these types of things made from hemp. And when we talk about, you know, how much hemp do we need to grow to sequester carbon to make an impact on, on climate change? I think if we all wore fabric and we all wore clothes that were made of hemp, there'd be tons of need for it and it would put lots of it in the ground. So it would sequester lots of carbon. We wouldn't be throwing our clothes away quite as fast because they last longer as well. Um, they're extremely breathable, uh, as with, which is another um, factoid that I don't know if Deanna mentioned or not. But, you know, the list goes on and on and on. Um, one thing that, you know, I, I love is the, the hemp towels. So these are 17% hemp. Um, hemp is extremely durable um, um, as far, and, and also absorbent. So the absorption value of hemp seems to be a little greater than that of cotton as well. And again, a towel is another thing that if you don't, you know, use a new towel every single time, that antimicrobial, um, you know, concept, you know, when it comes to towels, again, just makes sense. So um, last thing I kind of want to talk about is two things, actually, bags. There are bags and bags and bags. My wife has a backpack, a purse, and things like that. There's a company called Himalayan Hemp. You can find a bag for anything, any size, any color, any anything. So there are tons of them out there. Go out, you know, get them. They all have this little leaf on there, which kind of helps promote, you know, a little bit about what the plant really symbolizes. And like I my said, favorite. lastly, my wife's favorite 
it's a pillowcase on here that is 100% hemp. My, we uh, purchased hemp sheets um, a few months ago, and my wife has done nothing but rave about how wonderful these hemp sheets are. So, Deanna, you want to tell us a little bit about the hemp sheets? The hemp sheets are the best. They, um, I find that they're cool um, when they need to be cool, and they keep you warm when they need to be keeping you warm. Um, as we, as I wash them, they are getting softer and softer. They are not scratchy as some people think, um, when they think about the hemp, uh, material. Um, I just think that they are one of the best set of sheets and we've had many in our lifetime. Um, but these are truly my favorite sheets that I've had on our bed ever. Um, so I highly recommend, um, purchasing yourself a set of hemp sheets. I do know a little bit about sheets. I worked for Bed Bath & Beyond for 10 years and also Macy's Home Division. So I sold sheets for a very, very long time. Um, the feel of these is a little bit different. It's a little bit more like, you know, grandma sheets. Um, but, you know, I think what Deanna said is they're cool when they need to be cool and warm when they need to be warm. That's an attribute for me sleeping wise that it's, you know, it's priceless. So that goes to the breathability of the of the uh, of the hemp fabric that breathability kind of allows air to flow through and you know so it doesn't become overly hot or overly cold um, with the sheets so um, you know last thing I want to mention again is uh, hemp for textiles I'm going to mention it again is this uh, as we talk about carbon sequestration um, there's going to have your most amount of carbon sequestration happen in plants that are meant or intended for textiles because they grow a very long they they grow uh thicker stalks and things like that and because you want to get these long fibers to make your textiles so you know when we're looking at you know ways we can you know make impacts i think if we you know dove a little bit deeper into you know our clothing and our apparel being a little bit more sustainable i think we can make a, hum a humongous impact so that's pretty much all I got to say about that. Hey, everybody, back again. Tell you a little bit more about uh, some of the uses for, for hemp as a natural resource. So uh, we kind of grouped together some things here. We got wood, we have paper, we have plastic, and we have something called hempcrete. So these are more of your industrial types of building materials and things like that that we're going to learn a little bit about right now. So Deanna, can, what can you tell us about, say, uh, hemp as a plastic? So hemp plastic, most common everyday plastic items can be made from hemp. Um, hemp is, it's biodegradable, resistant to heat, reduces our, our dependence on petroleum oil-based plastic, and comparable strength to fiberglass. Very cool. So um, some of the items you see here, these are hemp plastic sunglasses. So basically, um, you know, there's two ways to go about it. They can use a mold and inject a mold with hemp plastic or they can use um, 3D printing. So 3D printing, um, you know, basically this is a guitar pick that's made out of hemp. So if you ever wanted musical hemp, this is how you do it, a guitar pick made out of hemp plastic. Um, there's a lot of talk about straws and the biodegradability of those and those. You know, this is a plant-based straw that has hemp as an ingredient for it so again it's nice and durable it's different than the um than the paper ones that are out there but you know the cool thing about it it will start to uh, decompose a couple weeks after you throw it into the ground um you know this is actually a pretty hard plastic kind of the you know uh device it reminds me of like a pill bottle so what if in the world we took all the pill bottles out there and we made them out of hemp plastic it kind of would help you know a little bit maybe something but um, this is hemp plastic. And then, you know, things like this, the sisal and the cellulose are plant-based, you know, so um, different ways to use hemp plastics and oil or petroleum-based uh, type products that can be, um, that can, you know, use a more natural approach. So Deanna, what do you have to say about hemp as a paper? Hemp paper, let's see. If we use hemp for making paper instead of timber, we could save around 4 billion trees a year. It requires fewer and less toxic chemicals than wood-based paper. It's more durable than wood paper. Um, producing more hemp paper will reduce defor deforestation. And hemp paper can be recycled up to eight times compared to just three times for paper made from wood pulp. 
All right, so interesting little tidbit about hemp paper. Did you know that the Declaration of Independence was written on hemp paper? So back in the day, way back when, when the settlers came here and stuff, hemp was a major part of their crops. I believe it was said that, you know, if you had farmland, you had to, you had to designate some percentage, I believe it was about 10%, to the production of hemp because it was used for so many different things, paper being one of them. So um, hemp paper, it's something that we've been playing with a little bit. You know, we've done some community organizing work and things like that. And we've done coloring sheets that are um, on hemp paper. So, uh, you know, we're able to engage with um, all different types of, you know, categories of people and ages and things like that and show them hemp in a different way. So the fact that we utilize, you know, the hemp paper for coloring sheets, you know, kind of introduces the world you know, from a from a, a young standpoint that, you know, this is a resource. This is something that's going to help us going forward. So with that being said about paper, um, what do we have to say about wood? So wood is natural building products such as hemp flooring are gaining popularity for those who want healthy homes made with sustainable, eco-friendly building materials. It's actually 20% harder than oak. It's fire resistant and can be grown in four months versus decades for tree-based lumber. And it can sequester and store carbon, which we've been talking about a lot. Very cool. So just, just like with paper, you know, um, the, the wood is going to be made from the pulp or the hemp herd. Um, one of the things, I don't know if we mentioned, but it certainly uses a lot less water and no chemicals or pesticides go into growing hemp. So these, these, these hemp plants, they can grow in just a few months versus trees that take, you know, decades to mature to a point where we can use them. So the, the interesting thing about this hemp wood, there's a company in Kentucky called Hemp, hemp Wood. A gentleman by the name of Greg Wilson has figured out a way to take hemp stalks. So basically a bunch of these and he crushes them down into a mold and adds a soy-based glue that basically creates a big six by six post or block of wood that is then cut down and shaved down into smaller pieces such as this right here. So this is a small thinner piece that would be used for um, the application of flooring. Uh, the hemp wood is said to have had a, have a hardness rating um, that is consistent with Brazilian cherry wood. So it makes an excellent, excellent uh, floor as well. Um, we have played with hemp would um quite a bit as a hemp study group one of our master craftsmen showed us how to make a bowl um using a lathe so we took a big chunk of wood and we we spun it and kind of took off edges and then we burrowed it out and things like that so we made a one-of-a-kind hemp wood bowl so um you know it's kind of interesting it's very unique i love the grain pattern and that comes again from all the different pieces being um com combined together and, and pressed one of the things about this grant is we were making um some marketing material holders that you know are not plastic so all we did is take a simple block of this wood cut an angled groove in it and now it's a brochure holder so you know these are the types of things that we can do to reduce some of the plastics that we use in our life and send a little better message as to what we're promoting um all of that is made from something you know the the, the hemp herd is basically just the hemp stalks all ground up you know and that's what it looks like so i think this is going to lead us into our next segment which is this big bold block of thing right here which is called hempcrete so diana tell us about hempcrete sure hempcrete a carbon sequestering fibrous insulation material made from hemp stalks and lime has been approved for the u.s residential building code utilized by 49 out of 50 states it's carbon negative non-toxic energy efficient and resistant to mold that's right folks resistant to mold that's pretty awesome stuff it's antimicrobial in nature and it is amazing insulator so basically what this is is a bunch of that little hemp herd mixed with some lime and some water it's like a one-to-one -one ratio of all of them and we put it in, in a flower pot and kind of just let it dry so this is what it would look like you know once it's cured and things like that um, we mentioned that we are a study group so we kind of um, experimented a little bit with what other materials can we throw in there, such as like old t-shirts and things like that to help create, you know, a, a biomass that would help, you know, fill a void and create, you know, an insulatory system for this off-grid cabin that we're making. So again, it started here with just a little bit of mixing this stuff up and now it's turned into, we're building a hempcrete cabin in the woods. 
And if you think about the scale at which, you know, you'd need the amount of hemp you would need to make houses and stuff out of this, that's an awful lot of carbon sequestration, making this an amazingly resourceful plant, so many different uses, and it's good for the environment. You know, so we got we got to keep that in mind as we're talking about the hemp, you know, the more we use it, the better it is for the environment. And that's really, you know, my point in all this is the more things that you can utilize that are hemp based and more products you can buy, the more of this stuff that's going to go in the ground and the better it is going to be for our environment. Thank you guys very much for, um, you know, listening today. We're going to have our next episode. One thing that we did not discuss was um, hemp as a medicine. Hemp as a medicine. Um, we're going to take an entire one or two shows to talk about hemp as a medicine because I think it's something that people are str are starving for education and things like that. We're going to have a basics class and a little bit more advanced course that talks about some of the derivatives that the hemp plant um, is producing now as far as like some of the adult use recreational stuff. We're going to be joined by a woman by the name of um, Dr. Andrea Spar and a gentleman, William Brown, who uh, walk us through some of that stuff in our next episodes. Other future podcasts, we're going to be talking more about the hemp plant, uh, the hemp pallet cabin, as well as hemp microgreens as well. We'll be live from a, um, from a hemp farm out in Percocy to talk about hemp microgreens as well. So that's really all I got to talk about right now. Thank you very much for uh, listening to our podcast. Please get out there, scour the internet, buy something hemp today. And Pampa Ray.